Mermaid Mural Using Acrylic and Gel Nail Art Tutorial Part 2 by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you the second part of my nail mural contest entry which I got second place in, um, but I'm going to be showing you the second part of it because it was so much footage I had to break it into three videos. In this one I'm going to be showing you how I did all of the acrylic work on my mermaid. So this won't be painting her or the acrylic work on all of the other little creatures that are around her, like I know that there's an anglerfish and some jellyfish and a octopus, all that's going to be in the last video. So today's it's just the acrylic on the mermaid, which I hope you like that and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So I've already completed the background and it's got a layer of matte gel top coat on it so I can sketch on it lightly with a pencil. So I'm just going to basically, like I said, sketch out where I want all of the mermaid's parts to be. So I'm going to pretty much draw her on that. And it's very hard to see it's light, which is good because you don't want it to be too intense if you change your mind. And then fill in the gaps with some clear acrylic. So there is definite crevices in the nails where they meet. So you want to fill that in so it's easier to sculpt on later. So just take a clear acrylic and everywhere where you see there's going to be an issue, fill that in. And it's really important to have that sketch on there first because otherwise you don't know where you're going to be filling things in. So I'm just taking, like I said, clear acrylic and filling in all of those major gaps. So set a bead in there and then keep pressing it in from side to side. You don't want to really have too much acrylic on there where it goes off to the edges. You just want to fill it in under where you're going to need it. So as you can see, it's much flatter now. I'm also going to be doing a little bit more on her torso and then within where her arm will be. So I'm just going to continue flattening those out, making sure that it really does, because it's going to make such a big difference in the end and make it so much easier to do. So then there's that little bit of acrylic for her other arm. And now I'm going to be covering her with white. So pretty much the entire thing, starting, I'm just going to start with her shoulders and then continue down her waist. And this first layer of white is kind of, if you watched uh, my the first video with the painting and the background, I said that you want to add a layer of white underneath like the turtle and the fish because otherwise you have a chance of seeing some of that background color come through and then it's not going to look as clean. Same thing for the mermaid. If you add a layer of white acrylic on the, for just on the base, it's going to make all of the colors on top of her so much brighter and cleaner looking. Plus you don't have to worry if the colors are going to show through because you know that they aren't. So that's going all the way up to the end of her tail, not the actual, the fins on the end of her tail, but just the point. Continue that up. Make sure that those lines look nice and clean and really soft and flowy, just like that. Keep adding some more white acrylic. And then once you're happy with the way that is with her tail, then I'm going to go and I'm going to start, and I switched brushes here, and I'm going to add the first little bit to her face. And you can see it's the profile of her face, so her nose does show there, and then also add her neck and her arm. And then here's, well, first I'm going to do the arm that's reaching down. So my idea for this is that she has one arm that's reaching down into the dark side and is being held in place by an octopus, and the octopus is keeping her from really swimming where she wants to go. And then her other arm is reaching towards the light side. So it's kind of like an internal battle. That's why if you see the magazine, it says mermaid as a, as a metaphor. Because the metaphor is that she is being pulled down from where she wants to go, which... I don't know, I just thought it was kind of a, a cool little cool little metaphor there. So I'm going to be just adding that other arm that's reaching up, filling in her back, looked a little bit narrow in one spot. I'm just going to touch that up, add more acrylic wherever you see fit here. This white is incredibly important, it's the foundation of the mermaid, so you want to make sure that it is good before you move on. So now I'm using like a really pretty melony type color and I'm going to be adding that first layer of acrylic over her tail. So I'm just going to put some of that down and then I'm going to take and with some tool I'm going to press that into that wet acrylic. So I first dipped my tool into some just clear powder just so it wouldn't stick in there and then really press it in. Which is a little bit difficult to do because you can't get the same angle on it as if you if you were to do this on a nail because it you can't wrap it around it because it's too big. So you have to really press hard and kind of work it in. And like I, like as you can see, you can't wrap it as tightly. So it's not as easy said as done. So I'm just gonna continue. And then as you can see, it wasn't, there was still white showing around the coral or the melon type color. So you wanna make sure that you fill in all those gaps with just a little bit more of that color with a smaller brush. And try not to fill in all of those little crevices that you made with the tool. So you wanna make sure that you keep those intact. And then using a nude color, I'm going to be adding that over her all of the rest of this so over her face her back and her arms and neck and just add that in there and the reason that I'm using a cover pink here is because if you used a tan color it would have a certain it would be really opaque and skin isn't 
it's see-through a little bit, especially on me. If you look at me, you can see all my veins in my arms, like every single one of them. I look like, I don't know, an anatomy demonstration. But, so you wanna have, so a slightly translucent or a jelly type color of cover pink is going to give her sort of that same skin type sheerness that really I think looks really realistic. And then I'm going to be blending in some berry color over the tail, which is going to sort of gather in the crevices made by the tool and create a very easy um, scale pattern. Now I did not leave it just like this because I want it to be a little bit more detailed than that. So I did add some more into that later. And now I'm going to be adding clear acrylic under where I want her hair to be. And I'm just going to let that, I made that and then I moved on to something else. And so now on a nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting out half of her tail, so the fins on the end of her tail. So there it is, like a giant petal shape. And then I'm going to be adding some little lines in it with a silicone tool. After that's about 85, 75, 85% set. I'm going to pick that up, set that on the nail where I want it to be. And because that's set, you don't have to have the clear acrylic underneath it because it's not going to sink into that crevice. It's, it's fine the way it is. And here's the other half of that tail. Same thing, let that set for a second, then press in to make the crevices with a silicone tool, let it set for a second more, then pick it up and set it onto the nail in place. And use a silicone tool to really push it in and make sure it's going to stay. So now I'll move back on to work on our hair some more and I'm going to start with some bronze acrylic and just form out the start of her hair and do her hairline there in the beginning. And I am using silicone tools all throughout the part of her hair to really get the look that I'm going for here. So I just started and with silicone tools, I'm going to carve out little curly cues in her hair to make it look like it's swirling all behind her in these curls. So I'm just gonna add that and then add a swirl in there with the silicone tool. Just take it and basically draw a swirl, very easy. And if the acrylic is the right wetness, it will make little curly cues without much trouble at all. If it's too dry, it's not going to remove the acrylic properly it's going to more pull it and stretch it and if it's too wet it'll just re go back into shape so you got to kind of play with it to make sure that you get the right appearance depending on how long you've let your acrylic set and so then i'm going to be adding some more hair coming around hers that was all going behind her but there's also going to be some hair that's kind of going around that shoulder and coming down in front of her so i'm going to be adding that and then just filling it in and making sure that I have all of her hair where I want it to be. This process actually took a lot longer than I thought it was going to because I was never quite happy with the way it flowed because you want to have like a, you want to have the appearance that it's underwater. So then after I have that and I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm just gonna make sure her hairline is how I like it, just like that. And I'm gonna be adding a little bit more acrylic here and there. Like I said, keep touching it up until, you're, until you are happy with the way it looks. Now a little bit, a couple hairs that didn't stay with the beaten path, I decided to get rid of those. I, they were only there for a second. So now I'm going to be adding some two little fins that are on either side of her tail. So I'm just going to put down two beads that same melon color, form them into a trapezoid. Just Or no, it's a parallelogram, not a trapezoid. And then create little details on that with a silicone tool. When it's you know partially set, after that's on there, pick it up and set it down. Sorry, I didn't show that. My the mural was off a little bit, but then you can just set them down. They don't have to be on there perfectly because you can blend them in with some more of that melon color acrylic, which I think I might be doing right now. I don't know. I actually did this whole design months ago for when I sent it in. Yep, see, blending it in, blending them in with just some more of that, either the berry color or the melon color acrylic, and then add some yellow on the ends of them just to brighten that up a little bit. And do the same thing with the tail, blend that in just so that, you know, they're permanently attached they're not going to fall off because where they were set it was a temporary fix and then add some berry color to the base of each of those and then add a little bit of yellow on the tips of her tail to brighten that up and make sure that it's really nice and vibrant and then using some of that wet yellow acrylic I'm going to take and I'm going to be highlighting along the top of her tail each individual scale this is part of the reason why this was so time consuming because it really I did spend a lot of time working on her it was I was about four hours working on the mermaid, which is quite a bit of time. I mean, you know, it's not forever, but it's, it's a good chunk of time. So I really did go through and make sure that each of these little scales were properly highlighted and did really show up nice. And this also adds so much texture doing with these little tiny beads that it helps. And the tool that was underneath it, that little, like a, it's like a sketch almost, it helps you know where to place the scales. It's not the end result. It's just a idea. And so then I'm going to go through and highlight each of those little individual sections on her fins, just like that. 
So I did three of them and then I go through and do the ones in between them. If you do them, the ones that are right next to each other, they're going to blend together. But if you go every other and then go back through or back through and fill in in between them, it's going to give you a much better crisper result. So then there's the yellow on those. And then after I have that done, I'm going to go through and add a little bit more yellow on her tail. Just adding those. Like I said though, this was extremely time consuming and I almost didn't think I was going to get it done. I ended up overnighting this to get it into Nails Magazine in time. So first I'm just going to highlight that center stripe down those tail fins just like that, the center, very center. And then add a little bit more of a highlight on that little center piece of the tail. And then as you can see, there's still some white showing on either side of her tail. So I'm going to fill that in with some more of that berry color. And that is it for the acrylic work on the mermaid. To see the rest of the acrylic work and all of the painting on the acrylic stuff, go ahead and click the final link that will be in the description box once it is available. If you're watching this right after it's uploaded, the next video will be uploaded tomorrow. And the previous one doing the background is in the description box. So check those out. I hope you like this and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well.